What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another fantasy football video. Today, it's Sunday, it's game day, you know what time it is. We're here to go through the top 18 tight ends. We'll let you know a bit about each matchup, how we feel about them, so overall, we can set your expectation for these games. Remember, this is not a rankings video. While each player listed in our top 12 will be the top 12 tight ends we have in our rankings, the actual rankings are available on our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com if you haven't yet checked it out you definitely should do so members of our website also gain access to all of our waiver information including suggested fab the trade model sports betting picks dfs picks and more once again that's thefantasyfootballadvice.com the link as always in the description box below before we do jump right into those tight ends let's get into the stat of the day yesterday's stat of the day was John Hightower actually leads the league in air yards over the last three weeks which player through that same span ranked second the correct answer was actually Travis Fulgham congratulations to John Jacobs you got this one right as for today's stat of the day which tight end currently has the highest percentage of their team's air yards once again that's which tight end has the highest percentage of their team's air yards if you know who that is leave your answer in the comment section down below we'll be happy to let you know who wins in tomorrow's video let's hop right over to the top six tight ends of course the first player Travis Kelsey he's coming off of a very down performance last week Travis Kelsey on a road game against Denver posted a three for 31 stat line he did catch every target that went his direction but unfortunately there were really only three of them this was overall a bad passing day for the Kansas City Chiefs from a volume perspective they were out to a pretty sizable lead there was no real reason to force a high pass attempt game so I would say this was more an outlier than anything we should really expect from him from a season long perspective but this week since he's facing the Jets in a game in which they're nearly 20 point favorites it's very possible we could see something very similar in turn his floor is going to be a bit lower a repeat of a type of performance like last week it's in the range of outcomes the New York Jets pass defense against tight ends it's nothing to be worried about they've also allowed two multi-td performances to the tight end position this season so although he will come into this matchup with a lower floor than usual his ceiling it's still going to be high the next player we have is George Kittle similarly to Travis Kelsey last week San Francisco found themselves in a blowout Kittle was still able to garner seven targets putting together a somewhat respectable performance of five or seven receptions for 55 yards heading into this game though we should expect a much more competitive game they play the Seattle Seahawks who have found themselves in shootouts in virtually every game while the pass defense of Seattle has been very weak to say the least against wide receivers when it comes to tight ends they really haven't been giving up a lot Seattle currently gives up the fourth fewest amount of fantasy points to that position which is pretty surprising when nearly every team faces Facing them has a really good passing day. I will say that the level of talent of the tight ends that have been facing them isn't all that high, but still, they've yet to allow a touchdown to a tight end. If you ask me though, I think that's a trend likely coming to an end this week. Moving on, we have Darren Waller of the Las Vegas Raiders. He finds himself this week in a complete smash spot. He's coming off the bye, presumably rested. This week, he gets a game against the Cleveland Browns, and as as we know Cleveland they've been really bad at defending tight ends in Cleveland's recent games though they haven't been giving up a lot but the level of talent at tight end hasn't been that high Darren Waller a focal point of this Raiders offense he has the potential to completely feast there have been two games this season where he's had double digit targets in those games a combined 28 and on the season has been averaging over nine per game it is also worth noting that he's caught a a touchdown in both of his last two contests only one game this season has he been unable to score double digit fantasy points so Waller his floors high his ceilings high so get pumped for his performance this week moving on though we have Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens and I may sound like a broken record here but his down performance was likely because he was in a blowout game yes the Philadelphia Eagles they did come back the end result was 28 for 30 but for most of that 
game, the Ravens had a sizable lead. When they were in the lead though, there was heavy usage of the run, not as many pass attempts. In Philadelphia, who turned it around on offense the second half, they were really dominating in time of possession. Seeing these top tier tight ends struggle when it comes to putting together solid fantasy performances and games that are blowouts, and it's exactly why we put emphasis on always checking these game lines. This week though, he does face Pittsburgh. He is coming off the bye, presumably more healthy. This also gives an opportunity for this offense to take a step back, maybe look at things, see what's not clicking this season that they did differently last year. So the fact that they are coming out of the bye is an advantage, but unfortunately running into Pittsburgh is more than likely going to result in an uphill battle for Andrew. Moving on, we have Rob Gronkowski of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He has been very involved in this offense, being one of the highest targeted receivers over the past two weeks. At this point, we do have to recognize that he's a significant part of their offense. Tom Brady, he still has that connection with him as long as the volume is going to be there. Rob Gronkowski is going to continue to smash. This week, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they have the Monday game. It will be against the New York Giants, so we may see another situation where the passing volume, it just might not be as high as it typically would. Currently, they're 12 and a half point favorites, and not only is that a sizable gap, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are also on the road, and with the success of the running backs on that team as of late, the passing volume in the second half, it really might not be all that high. We do still have Gronkowski ranked inside the top six though, so clearly we're expecting big things. Just know in these potential blowouts, the floor for these players is a bit lower than usual. The final top six tight end we have is Jonu Smith of the Tennessee Titans. It seemed like last week everything was stacked against him. First off, they played Pittsburgh, a super solid defense. He was coming back from injury, although he didn't miss any games. It's very likely he wasn't playing at 100%. Heading into this week though, he's presumably more healthy. He's also in one of the best matchups he could possibly ask for. Tennessee, they're facing Cincinnati. Cincinnati in week seven gave up three receiving touchdowns to Cleveland tight ends. The week before that, two touchdowns to Indianapolis tight ends, which makes three consecutive games allowing TDs to the tight end position. So Jonu Smith, a player who in his first four games had five receiving touchdowns, his upside this week, it is extremely high. One last thing to know about Janu and this matchup is that the projected total is 50 points. Yes, I understand that's not all that high compared to some other games we've had this season, but when compared to the field and the opportunities for the other tight ends, this 50 point projected total is tied for the second highest of this week. We're moving over to the next six tight ends. This will be the middle to back end tight end ones. To start, we have Hunter Henry of the LA Chargers. And as it stands today, with Justin Herber as the quarterback of this team, Hunter Henry has been getting a significant amount of volume. In the last two games, he has combined for 15 total targets, a pretty even split between both. We have eight targets and seven targets. That type of volume is going to mean his floor is relatively high. And while no, this matchup isn't overall great against Denver, they haven't been a defense to target when streaming tight ends. But for any anyone out there who's nervous about what happened with Kelsey posting a dud against them, it had nothing to do with the strength of the defense, more to do with the overall game script. Moving on, we have TJ Hawkinson of the Detroit Lions. Hawkinson has actually found himself to be the second most consistent playmaker in the receiving game behind only Kenny Galladay. And had it not been for drawing this really difficult matchup, there's a very strong chance he would be ranked inside the top six. Like I said though, this game for him, it's probably not going to be easy. They face Indianapolis, who has allowed the fewest fantasy points to that position. Indy is also rested. They're coming off of a bye and have yet to allow a receiving touchdown to a tight end this year. Detroit though, they are coming in as underdogs. This game also has the third highest projected total of the week. We would not be surprised one bit if he succeeds. The next player we have is Jared Cook of 
the New Orleans Saints, no, Jared Cook hasn't been heavily involved in the passing game from a volume perspective. Pretty surprising when they've been without Michael Thomas for so long. But the one area he's been succeeding in, it's definitely been in his red zone production. Jared Cook, he has a receiving touchdown in his last two games, three in his last four. Now he faces Chicago, a team not only lenient in giving up receiving yards to tight ends, but have also allowed at least one receiving touchdown in four of seven games this year. The next player we have is Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, it's true. Dallas Goddard was activated, expected to play, which I don't think most people would have expected because they have a bye week just next week. Clearly, their motivation for activating him early was to try to secure the win by all means possible. This is a divisional game against the Dallas Cowboys. So a win here, significant playoff implications, which to me indicates Dallas Goddard usage is likely going to tie in with the scoreboard. If we knew he was completely healthy, playing on a high percentage of snaps, his ranking, it would definitely reflect that. And while he is a TE1 by most people's standards, the range of outcomes for what we can expect this week, it's really going to be wide. If the Eagles get out to an early lead, Dallas Goddard may be on the sideline, ride the bench. But if the Cowboys somehow have the lead or the Eagles are at risk of potentially losing this game, I could see a situation where Dallas Goddard doesn't leave the field. So ultimately, his ceiling really high, but unfortunately, his floor, it's of course going to be low. Moving on, we have Noah Fan of the Denver Broncos. This week, they face the Chargers. The Chargers are a much more strong defense against opposing wide receivers. So Jerry Judy, possibly Tim Patrick, they could struggle in this one. When it comes to defending opposing tight ends, the LA Chargers are actually in the bottom half of the league. Even more so, they're in the bottom 10. Tim Patrick, who I named earlier, he's also a game time decision. If it were to come down to him missing it, leaving only Jerry Judy and a plethora of less skilled receivers on the field, Noah Fant, he could be one of the highest targeted players in this game. As we know, the LA Chargers have been running up the scoreboard lately, so if they do force Denver into a situation where they are coming from behind late, Noah Fant also has that garbage time opportunity. The final tight end we have inside of our top 12 is Robert Tunyon of the Green Bay Packers. He's definitely taken the backseat as soon as Devontae Adams returned. So yes, our expectations for Tunyon, they must be adjusted, but coming into this matchup, there is a 50 point projected total. It's also against Minnesota, who's been able to answer when these teams are coming at them offensively. If this does end up being a shootout, Robert Tunyon, the likely second option behind Adams, does have a good chance to score, and the Minnesota Vikings, through their last two games, have allowed a touchdown to a tight end in both contests. All right, guys, we're going to go over tight ends 13 through 18. These are, of course, going to be more of your streaming options, the guys you would likely not want to put in if you have a better option available. But to start, we have Jimmy Graham of the Bears. In this one, I would definitely say Jimmy Graham has a pretty high ceiling. No, he hasn't caught a touchdown since facing Tampa Bay in week five. But don't forget, the New Orleans Saints have been torn apart by tight ends all season. Right now, they give up the second most fantasy points to the position. Last week's matchup against Carolina was actually the first week all season that they haven't allowed a receiving touchdown to a tight end. So even though Jimmy Graham has only eclipsed 34 receiving yards in one game this season, there's a good chance that his streak of no receiving touchdowns does come to an end this week. Behind him, we have Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins. Now, the biggest news in this one is obviously Tua is the starter. That does, of course, leave a lot of risk we're not sure how many overall pass attempts there will be or who on this offense will even be receiving what amount of targets but what we do know at least is that Ryan Fitzpatrick historically has always favorited targeting receivers historical data also supports that young inexperienced quarterbacks when it comes to NFL experience they typically target tight ends at a higher rate so although we don't know exactly how involved Gesicki will be the odds this week are actually in his favor. 
Up next, Evan Engram of the New York Giants. Not much really to say with Engram. It's been virtually the same story all season long. Yes, the targets have been there, but no, the offense, it really hasn't been efficient. Evan Engram received nine targets just last week against Philadelphia, was only able to translate that into six receptions for 46 yards. He's still yet to score a receiving touchdown on the season. And heading into this matchup, Tampa Bay, they're a much tougher defense against tight ends than that of Philly. I will say though, what he does have going for him is that the New York Giants are nearly two touchdown underdogs. This of course indicates a pretty heavy passing game script. Just be aware, the Giants have been playing from behind in virtually every game this season and it really hasn't worked out either. Behind him, we have Trey Burton of the Indianapolis Colts. The last time we saw him before the bye week, he had scored both a rushing and a receiving touchdown in the same game. Obviously, that's the type of upside he brings. And if this were an easier matchup, he would likely be ranked higher. The reality is though, only two other teams have been better at mitigating fantasy points to tight ends than that of Detroit. The most targets he's also received in a single game is six. So while yes, he always has the opportunity to smash, the odds of him hitting the low end of his range of outcomes, it's much more likely than him hitting the high end. Moving on, we have Harrison Bryant of the Cleveland Browns. A pick for Bryant's obviously trying to chase the hot hand. As we know, he did have a multi-TD performance taking the place of Hooper. Hooper, he's also still out. So Harrison Bryant does have the opportunity to repeat. The matchup, it's not great. It's also not bad. But when banking on a player who's relatively unknown, his one-week sample size we're going off of, it obviously brings in some risk. The final player we have inside of our top 18 is Eric Ebron of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Undeniably, Pittsburgh has an insane amount of receiving weapons. So Eric Ebron, there are going to be weeks in which he's not going to receive the targets we would like to have. Last week though, he received 8 targets. And considering the fact that the Baltimore Ravens rank top 10 at defending wide receivers, and they're much weaker at defending opposing tight ends. They've allowed a touchdown to a tight end in three of seven games, so the chances of Ebron producing in this matchup, while not all that high, if he does, it really shouldn't come as a surprise. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. We really hoped you enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.